we've defined this Hammett sigma parameter, specifically sigma p, as the logarithm of this ratio of equilibrium constants, and actually rate constants can also be used here. And sigma p essentially is a measure of the electron withdrawing or donating power of the substituent in this specific reaction. And so in this video, we're gonna survey some sigma p values, rationalize some of those values using structural arguments, and then look at other examples of Hammett sigma parameters, realizing that sigma p really rigorously only applies in this specific reaction. And if we want sigma to be transferable, we need to be looking at reactions that are similar to the ionization of a parasubstituted benzoic acid. If we really want to broaden the appeal of this approach, then we need multiple different types of sigma values associated with different types of reactions that can be correlated with new reactions that we come across. First, though, I want to survey some Hammett sigma p parameters so that we can really get an intuitive quantitative feel for what sigma is, is telling us. So these tables list sigma p values for many, many different substituents. On the left, we have substituents that we would understand as electron withdrawing groups. And the strength of the electron withdrawing power is increasing as we move up the table. So the strongest electron withdrawing groups are at the top diazonium and carbocations, and the weakest electron withdrawing groups, 2-pyridyl, 3-pyridyl, are down here at the bottom. Now, we can rationalize the ordering of these using structural ideas like resonance, inductive effects, electronegativity, and, and other structural factors, and I wanted to look at a few examples on this side to kind of get that point across, that even though these are measured, they are rooted in structural factors. So for example, it would make sense that an acyl chloride, which is the group COCl right here, is going to be a stronger withdrawing group than say an amide, CONH2, because chlorine is more electronegative than nitrogen, withdraws electrons more strongly, and sure enough, the sigma p value for the acyl chloride group is greater than the sigma p value for the amide group. That makes sense, right? It would make sense that a carbocation, CME2+, is going to be much, much more withdrawing than, say, an alkyl group. And in fact, alkyl groups are going to show up over here on the electron donating side, which is neutral uh, because of the positive charge of the carbocation, right? That is profoundly electron withdrawn. So while we can't always rationalize the sigma p value due to emergent effects associated with the, the fact that all of the bonds and atoms in all of these groups matter, uh, we sometimes can. And, and in many cases, the sigma p value gives us structural insight. On the right-hand side here, we have groups that we would consider to be electron donating groups or electroneutral. Hydrogen, remember, we've defined as having a sigma p value of zero. Exactly. It is our standard. And here, the strength of the electron donating group increases as we move down. And so, for example, among the strongest electron donating groups that we can imagine is a carbanion. For example, the CME2 minus carbanion is among the strongest electron donating groups. And we can see that for the donating groups, the sigma p value is negative. And this makes sense given how we've defined sigma p. As we saw over here, we can rationalize some of these differences in sigma p values using structural factors. So, for example, it makes sense that an amino group is going to be more donating than a hydroxyl group because nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen and is a better, stronger electron donor. You can also use resonance differences to rationalize, for example, the difference between a 2-pyrrole and a 3-pyrrole group over here and the difference between 2-pyrrole and 3-pyrrole on the electron withdrawing side. So looking at this table, it seems like we now have a very nice scale of electron donating or withdrawing power. And we can ask the question, could I pick up these values and use them as, say, the independent variable in a study of the effect of changing a substituent on, the, say, the rate of a chemical reaction? Unfortunately, the answer is not exactly. And the reason is that a reaction that is not exactly the deprotonation of a parasubstituted benzoic acid is not going to be perfectly correlated with sigma p. For this reason, to really expand the applicability and the utility of Hammett sigma parameters, many different families of Hammett parameters have emerged over the years based on different types of chemical reactions. Acid-base processes, nucleophilic substitution, nucleophilic addition, elimination, loss of a leaving group, 
all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, these Hammett sigmas often don't generalize well. So where we would expect to see a strong linear correlation, we sometimes don't. So sigma p we're familiar with. Sigma m involves the ionization of meta-substituted benzoic acids, where here the R group is in a meta position relative to the carboxylic acid. And we've, we've seen previously that R in this situation is going to exert mostly inductive rather than resonance-based effects. So sigma P and sigma M we should expect to be different in general because of differences between resonance and inductive effects in the substituent R. There are also Hammett sigma values called sigma prime that actually measure neither resonance nor induction really, but what we might call through space effects. These are also called field effects. And the basic idea here is that R is exerting an influence on the acidity of this carboxylic acid only through space. It's far away from the carboxylic acid, so inductive effects are pretty weak, and there is no resonance contact between R and the carboxylic acid group. So sigma prime measures field effects, the third kind of structural effect that R can, can have on the acidity of this carboxylic acid group. Of course, we can also get away from acid-base reactions entirely. One thing about these parasubstituted benzoic acids that we alluded to earlier is that they ionize in such a way that the carboxylate is not actually in resonance contact, we might say, with the R group. There is no way to, for example, if R is electron withdrawing, delocalized electrons all the way to the R group. The negative charge is, is sort of stuck inside the carboxylate since we can't really push electrons in, in this direction. There are no pi electrons there to push. And so in reactions where an intermediate is formed where we can delocalize charge directly onto the substituent, sigma p and sigma m and even sigma prime may not be our best choice of Hammett parameter. For this reason, sigma minus and sigma plus were developed, and these parameters are based on reactions where the negative charge can delocalize into the substituent or positive charge. So in the case of sigma minus, this is still a proton transfer reaction, but it's of a phenol, and the negative charge, the electrons that are placed on oxygen, can now be delocalized into the substituent if it's electron withdrawing through electron flow like this. Likewise, for this dissociation of this benzylic chloride for sigma plus, now if R is electron donating, we can actually push electrons to show the delocalization of positive charge in this intermediate. This kind of active involvement of the substituent in electron donation or withdrawal via, via resonance is not possible with those substituted benzoic acids. So now that we've surveyed some of the different types of Hammett parameters, we're going to talk about how we can apply these as really the independent variable, an independent, quote unquote, roughly speaking, scale of electron withdrawing or donating power that we can use to gain mechanistic insight into new organic reactions.